Chop Studio here. Welcome to Weekend Project. Thank you for joining us. So happy to see you here. We're working on a scrap or crumb or strip piecing sort of spool project to use your scraps, give you memories of your projects that you have done and may have sort of waved goodbye to. I have came up with, I have come up with, words are hard sometimes, a little free little pattern, just a, a block pattern so you can use. And I have a rectangular piece here of six and a half inches long and three and a half inches wide. The top strips here are two inches thick. You've got two inch squares on either side here that we do a little flip on. And this is a great way to bust your stash. Now the background is obviously whatever color you want to use and your spool could be any color as well. I did this one as a little tester to see if I was going to like it. And I do. I had this one first, uh, but I didn't like the size of the spool at top. I'm like, yeah, it looks a little too big. So the size of the thread part is still the same so and I had some lovely purple here so I use that to just try to make me some variegated I'm like hey this would be a great way to bust your crumbs and stash and uh, strips and stuff like that to make this project so I'm going to build me out an orange one to go with this project right here Okay, so this makes a great little table topper. Uh, this size here would make great to a side of a tote bag. It's only about 18 inches long. It could, you can could make it even bigger or many of them and put it as a pad or something for underneath your um, sewing machine. So you need a uh, ruler, um, plexi ruler, your rotary cutter, uh, or you can mark it and use your scissors to cut. You need some, obviously some fabric and some thread and yeah, we're ready to rock. So our goal here is to make a orange colored spool. So as in for variegatedness, um, we can kind of start wherever. So let's let's actually start right here. So that's a piece I have in my hand. Let's give a little press here. I try to get most of the bits pressed. Okay, so here, and then I'm just gonna add another piece on top of that. So it's not straight. It doesn't need to be straight because we're gonna angle our ruler just like we did on this one here. We just kind of gave a little angle and then just did some fun cuts to make it look like a variegated thread. And just a regular stitch, regular 2.4. I have a Janome Horizon uh, 15,000. It's also an embroidery machine. That's what we're using here today. And I have Orafil uh, Light Grade Thread. Okay, now I'm just gonna press and then add another piece. We can go like very crazy on the colors, we go light to dark, go as I worked my way from the dark to the center out on this one, just thought it'd be just a fun to, just a fun to have some play on it. We've got some cute fish here. Let's add those. Okay, just sew that onto there. And the goal in the end is to make sure you have a big enough piece to cover the three and a half by six and a half to represent your thread. And you want to be able to give it a little bit of twist and fun to it because, uh, you know, that's what threads do, right? Uh, let's add a little bit of this. Okay, so let's just give that a little bit of a rip. I'm using just a bit, about a bit of everything. This makes a cute little pillow for a uh, sewing room. It's my great or cute little even wall hanging too. Showcase some of your favorite fabrics. Make a whole quilt out of it. Okay, so we have some more fishy fabric there, but let's wait for that. Let's, uh, what do we got here? That's orange and yellow. Let's kind of mix it so it's there. And of course, you can trim pieces if you wanted just a little bit. You can trim it and then just add more pieces, right? I think the more the merrier. I think it's going to look neat. this out. Let's see what else we're going to add here. Let's add maybe this other little piece of fish. I didn't realize I had so many orange pieces of fish fabric. <laughs> I think orange is a underrated color. Let me know. Do you like, in the comments below, do you like orange? Is orange one of your favorite colors? Or is it eh? Eh on the scale. I kind of like it. Okay. So I think I don't need anything else, but I am just going to use this little ruler as a quick little template. It is seven inches 
by, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, sorry, eight inches. So if I get a six and a half, which I can, I get to read about here, can I do a little twist? Do a little twist, I can. Okay, that's gonna be really cool. Or I can go, or I can go this way too. So if I, as long as I got my six and a half, which I have right till here, ooh, that's close. But we could use this, we could use that. And I, I kind of like that chunk. So let's move to the mat underneath. So let's just push this out of the way. These are our other pieces that we need to finish off our block. Okay. Now it depends on which way we're gonna go. We kind of like this little bit here, didn't we? All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. So we've got lots of room. But we need to scoot down. Okay, that's just, that comes just right at that line there. So I'm trying to get a little bit more of the bushy fabric. Okay, so now I'm going to come up straight on this side and across the top and then across the bottom and then I'm going to flip it around because I know this is a nice flat part right here, I'm going to come at my three and a half inches and my six and a half and then do that final cut to where it needs to be for that six and a half by three and a half. Okay, so just like this and then just like this. And we have our cute little orange variegated spool. Okay, <clears throat> let's just move those off to the side. Now to add to the background to either side of this, so this obviously is six and a half, so you're gonna have to, you're two inches by six and a half, so you can add the background there. Then this is our top of our spool part. I have it as a one strip piece, so you can see that, hopefully. And then I have the two inch squares going in each corner. And then what, you, right sides together, oops. This is a marbly kind of gray, so it's hard to tell sometimes what's the back and what's the front. And then we're going to go in and sew from like the corner edges on the inside to the outside edges. Okay. So the corner edges to the outside edges. I'm trying to fight something that's been going around the house. The boys have been feeling worse than I have, in, which is, you know, not very good. Put this one back in the corner here. And if that is where you started off in the corner there, then I'd start off in the corner on this side too. I find that it's easier to go from the side where it's the long side instead of trying to come in at the corner corner because sometimes you get to the needle just pop right down in the center there and just make a mess. So just come up here. I was um, tossing the little bits of triangle uh, aside because it's just, to me, it's just not big enough to do anything with. Stuff. There. That's what I've experienced when uh, sewing, when you're trying to flip a block, especially on just like a strip like this, put some characters together and stuff like that. It's, I just find it a little easier. Okay, so there's the point that's coming in this way. We want to make sure we're going in the opposite direction. And we just trim that off, press it. So our sides on here, just lining up our piece. This would make a great way to personalize something for somebody. You can put their initials in one of the spools. It could be a great uh, tote bag to, um, to guild meetings. Cool club. and we'll trim those little pieces back here just add a little heat oops like where did the other piece go <laughs> scissors and then just before I trim off I want to make sure 
that those pieces are going in the right direction. So that's a yes. Trim just about a quarter of an inch away. Same with this one. We need two, one for the top and one for the bottom of the spool. Okay, yes, we got it going in the right direction. Confirm before we clip. Okay. Now, we're going to press to the dark. Well, we've got a very windy day here today. We have uh, over a hundred kilometer um, hour winds. Sorry, I pressed to the dark and I was pressing to the light. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Okay, so once you got that, that open, just let roll. And it, I guess it doesn't matter which way you want your spool to go, you just take your top part there. And your bottom part there, and you got yourself a spool. I was like, this would be a fantastic scrap luster, but also very much a memory quilt for the quilter or crafter who made all the projects. And of course, you can play around with making the pattern a little bigger, a little smaller, maybe whatever tweaks your needs, whatever, whatever <clears throat> you may need it for to build some small ones around maybe because we don't want to see it from the other side. Okay. So we'll just press the seam. Roll out. Sound like a transformer. Roll out! <laughs> okay, and then we can add it to our other set. And I kind of like it on the other side of the blue, so we'll add it there. going on here and please uh, don't be afraid to like and subscribe and click that bell for notifications we do two videos a week and two lives a week it'd be great for you to come along for the adventure so all right scrappy strippy crummy spools have a great weekend everybody and we'll see you soon take care